Hey guys, welcome to Unite Civil Hub. If you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. In this video, we are going to discuss green building and its benefits. Without any further delay, let's move on to the video. What is green building? You may wonder. The answer isn't really clear. A green building is one that lowers or eliminates negative effects on our climate and natural environment via its design, construction, or operation. Green buildings help to save natural resources while also improving our quality of life. Next one, goals of the green building. The goals of the green building design are several. Listed below are a handful of them. Reduce coal, natural gas, and oil extractions environmental repercussions, such as oil spills, mountaintop removal coal mining, and pollution associated with natural gas hydraulic fracturing. Pollution levels in the air, water, and soil are reduced. Reduce global warming by conserving energy, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and sequestering carbon through biological processes like reforestation and wetland restoration. Natural ecosystems and biological variety should be preserved, with a focus on endangered and vulnerable species. Features that can make a green building. First one. Materials that regenerate quickly. Rapidly renewable materials are those that grow naturally and may be harvested in a short period of time, such as the 10-year duration specified by LEED. Just a few examples are bamboo flooring, cork flooring, corn-based carpet fiber, cotton insulation, natural linoleum, natural rubber flooring, saw insulation, straw bales for walls and insulation, strawboard cabinets, wool carpeting, weedboard millwork, and cabinetry. We use fast renewable materials to prevent the depletion of materials that take longer to develop, such as wood from old growth forests, or that originate from limited resources, such as plastics made from fossil fuels. When it comes to fast renewable materials, knowing how to use them correctly is critical. Bamboo flooring, for example, may not last as long in high traffic areas or regions with a lot of moisture. Next one, waste from landfills may be utilized. The primary objective of green building waste management is to keep rubbish out of landfills. Incorporating upfront planning in the design process, such as when identifying materials that will be diverted for recycling or reuse, is one method to attain this goal. Trash diversion targets might be set in terms of weight or volume, as well as allowances for recyclable waste collection, sorting, and storage. Identifying the requirements for trash monitoring and quantification in order to meet waste diversion goals. We expect more measures to be implemented in the future to prevent the garbage from ever reaching a construction site. This might be accomplished, for example, by lowering the amount of packing. Next one, simulation of energy. When building designs are changed, evaluating trade-offs using energy models of potential structures is rather simple. Wall design, window design, building shape, heating system choices, and other schematic design aspects may all be constructed in less than a day. Advanced energy models take longer to build and comprehend since they can examine precise trade-offs of systems like daylighting or energy controls, but they're often worth it when compared to the long-term costs of energy usage. When it comes to upgrading building designs for energy efficiency, there is no need for guessing. The importance of energy modeling in green building design should not be underestimated. Energy modeling takes into account the materials used for the walls and the rest of the building envelope, as well as the structure's size, shape, and orientation, as well as how the facility is inhabited and operated, the local climate, system performance, and energy usage over time. Next one, green structures and nature. When thinking about building design, it's helpful to remember our previous discussions about the natural elements from which buildings provide shelter, sun, air, wind, air leaks, drafts, and water, rain, surface water. Extremes in temperature, animal life, insects, rodents, birds, and others, water, underground water, and humidity, and contaminants, dirt, dust, mud, and airborne pollutants. This energy must be recognized, appreciated, and honored. The site and building design might collaborate to expand not just the layers of shelter and hence protection from the weather, but also to give ways for building occupants to engage with nature. 
rather than artificially interacting with nature via design defects such as large windows that only allow people to peek outside the design expert should look into deeper connections with nature to establish these links on the site employ all of the landscaping tools available including vegetation water views paths fences outdoor furniture structures like gazebos and pergolas and even unusual components like mazes and tree houses a sundial or a pool might be utilized to draw attention to the sun or water in the area even urban buildings provide several chances for meaningful if limited interactions with nature next one materials containing recycled content it is suggested that recycled content items be used Pre-consumer recycled materials are materials that are diverted from the waste stream during manufacturing. Concrete is the most commonly used construction material. Concrete may be made from recycled aggregate, which is crushed concrete that has had the reinforcing and other embedded components removed. Concrete may also include fly ash, which is a result of coal combustion, and slag, which is a byproduct of smelting metal ore. Materials such as concrete and steel that have previously been used may be separated and processed to be reused. Concrete that has been crushed, washed and graded may be used to generate aggregate for new concrete mixtures. Steel may be collected, separated from other recyclables using massive magnets, crushed into large bales and shipped to a processing plant where it is blended with microscopic amounts of virgin steel to be utilized in structural steel construction. Steel fabrication uses a high percentage of recycled steel in its feedstock which has reportedly risen to above 90% in recent years. That's it for this video. If you like my video hit like and comment down below. Thank you for watching.